right? That shows Soto basically shows you that, yeah, I yeah, I want to win, but you're the issue, you're the issue, you're the issue. I did my thing. F you guys. Hoffy, do you think Stefan Diggs, can there be such a thing that you want to win too much? Like, like you're trying to force will on yourself too much? Does Stefan Diggs kind of fall into that category? I mean, if that is a existing category, yes. Um, you know, it was what the end of the first half against the Dolphins. He was basically screaming, I want the ball kind of thing. Um, you know, I, I don't think he's been utilized as much as he has been in the past, but that I think kind of, you know, pays off in, in attributes to, you know, them having multiple weapons now. You know, Dalton Kincaid as a rookie tight end has been absolute freak of nature, yeah. you know, especially this second half of the season. So if you can you can double team Stephon Diggs, then you got to deal with Dalton Knox or, you know, Kincaid and Knox, both, you know, two headed monster tight ends. Um, so. You know, I, I think if you're Stefan Diggs, I understand that you want to be the guy, but you got to know that they're going to be trying to take you out of the game. And, you know, a win is a win, whether you have one catch or 15 catches, um, you know. But, yes, I do think that Stefan Diggs wants to win in the worst way. I mean, we saw it a couple of years ago when I think it was the AFC Championship game and they lost to the Chiefs, and he sat there on the field watching that ceremony and said we'll be back so yeah i think he is still holding on to that and he still wants to uh get that super bowl ring which i think every player does uh i think he just wears his emotions on his sleeves but that can be both a negative and a positive but uh you know i think that we've heard some negative turmoil as far as him this year with the you know the locker room and such but look at the run that they've been on to to end the season so i don't think that uh I don't think he's hurting the team. I think that, uh, you know, it, it's it's passion, and I think it's, you know, warranted, and I think it's a good thing for the Buffalo Bills. So for you Buffalo Bills fans here, I want you guys to fully hear me out before you comment on this thought. Fully hear me out before, you know, you make a judgment, right? Let's look at the New England Patriots, what was it, 10, 15 years ago, right? They had two tight ends by the name of Aaron Hernandez and Gronk. A two tight end monster. As of recent, I forgot Doxon Knox was even on the uh, uh, Buffalo Bills roster. He had been injured, so that kind of allowed Kincaid to to build up that, you know, report with Allen. So now he's back. So what I'm saying here now with Knox being hurt and uh, Kincaid elevating his play. You have now kind of developed a two-headed New England Patriot tight end monster here, right? Do you see, Hoffie, I'm asking you this question because you have the most knowledge of the New England Patriots. In When you had Aaron, Hern- Aaron Hernandez and Gronk, you guys never really had that number one receiver, right? You Like you had a bunch of mid-range guys that could, you know, sneakily get open and do some five-yard slants route. But... Gronk and her like and her and her and her Hernandez were the guys. Do the do, do could you possibly see the Buffalo Bills moving on from Stefan Diggs because of the elevation of Kincaid? Because they still have a Doc or a Knox, right? Could you see that potentially happening? I could see it happening. Uh I don't know that that necessarily will happen uh until it's, you know, time to pay Kincaid, you know, at that point um, Diggs might be on the latter part of his career. Um, but the Patriots did have Randy Moss at that point in time with, uh, I forgot about that, Hern- yeah. you know, with Hernandez, but I mean, still, uh, I think at that time he was, you know, on the latter part of his career. Uh, um, you know, I think Stefan Diggs right now in his, you know, kind of still in his prime, whereas Randy Moss was kind of, you know, on his way out and, you know, all he was doing was running go routes. Stefan Diggs can, you know, run a lot more different routes than than Moss did. But, uh, no, I think that um, you want to keep Stephon Diggs as long as you can. Um, so, no, I don't think they're going to trade him this year. But I could see down the down the line that there's going to be a cap casualty and he's probably going to be the one that, you know, you're going to have to cut in order to keep uh, Knox and Kincaid. But maybe they get rid of, you know, Vaughn Knox Miller. I think Knox is kind of getting up there in age. Yeah, Vaughn Miller needs to retire. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. I, I think the uh, the Buffalo Bills are in a, a great position with their 
you know, offensive weapons. And we haven't even spoken about, um, you know, Cook. I mean, it, it's yeah. like he, he and his brother switch places. You know, Dalvin Cook hasn't really done much. But, uh, yeah, I mean, Cook has been a pretty pretty viable option out of the backfield. He's been, you know, receiving the ball as well, too. So, I mean, you know, some allowing, you know, Josh Allen some solid check down. So, yeah, you have four offensive weapons that Josh Allen can share the rock with. So it's going to be difficult to get Stephon Diggs those 150-plus yards, 10 catches. But, you know, it, it's nice to have those weapons. So I think it's a beneficial, you know, beneficial to all parties there. So Kevin has a question for us. He says, have the Buffalo Bills ever been in an AFC championship game? The Buffalo Bills have not been in AFC championship game since OJ made his epic run down the 10 or the 405. No, they were against the Chiefs a couple years ago. <laughs> ah, that doesn't count. That doesn't count. It, it does too. 13 seconds, baby. 13 seconds. That's all I got to say about that. 13 seconds, baby. Kevin also says turnovers lose ball games. And that is a perfect segue into our next fact or crap of the day. Obviously, before we, guys. Before we get into that. Okay, before, before we, we get, get into, into that, that. Go ahead. We'll, we'll talk about, jo- you know, Josh Allen has 18 turnovers this year. So people talk about his turnovers. Uh, he has. Uh, he has more than 18. He has like 20 interceptions, doesn't he? I mean, yeah, I, I think yeah. this was in like December or something like that. But three of those games account for like seven or eight or i think nine of those you know nine of those turnovers in three games so it's you know, okay to throw a five interception game right is that yeah. what you're saying I mean, okay. the, the, the week one against the jets he threw three interceptions yeah. he had one turnover or excuse me i think a fumble as well so i mean you take away those three games and he had like nine turnovers you know so years past yes he turned the ball over but you know down down the uh the the final stretch he hasn't really turned the ball over so i think that's a over overblown narrative much like you know the dak prescott narrative 